charisma gets people to like you, trust you, and be led by you. So what really is charisma? It's a set of non-verbal behaviors. That's why charisma levels fluctuate. We assume that charismatic people are magnetic every instant of the day. The truth is, they aren't. You can actually raise or lower your charisma at any time. Becoming more charismatic involves simple tweaks to your behavior. It doesn't require you to be outgoing or attractive, or for you to change your personality, and you can actually be a charismatic introvert. It's a skill, a discipline, and it takes work and practice. One of the biggest charisma myths is either you have it or you don't. Contrary to popular belief, you're not born charismatic. One of the reasons charisma is mistakenly held to be innate is that charismatic behaviors are learned early in life. In fact, people don't realize they're learning them. They're just trying new behaviors and refining them. Eventually, the behaviors become instinctive. Increasing your charisma involves behaviors that project more of the three charismatic qualities. Behaviors of presence, behaviors of power, and behaviors of warmth. All of them are essential for charisma. The only thing that changes is what kind of charisma you will get depending on which of these three components is the strongest. All three are communicated mostly through body language, which isn't under our conscious control. So let's dive right in. Presence. This is the core of charisma and everything else is built on this single component. Have you ever felt in the middle of a conversation as if only half of your mind were present while the other half was busy thinking about something else? Do you think the other person noticed? We may think we can fake presence, we may think we can fake listening, but the human mind can read facial expressions in as little as 17 milliseconds and there is a good chance that your face reaction will be a split second delayed if your mind is somewhere else. The other person will get a feeling that something is not quite right and this delay can even give them a feeling you're unauthentic. But when you project presence, people around you feel respected and valued. Here is a technique to keep yourself present in every interaction. Close your eyes and try to focus on one of the following three things. The sounds around you, your breathing, or the sensations on your toes. That's it, it's that simple. Whenever you feel your mind wandering, try bringing your attention back to your toes and then you can fully refocus on the conversation again. If your mind happens to wander again, just repeat the process. You could say this is a mindfulness technique. Power can be projected through social status and body language. Imagine a gorilla whose territory has just been invaded by a rival. He wants to intimidate the intruder on his territory, so he starts beating his chest. But why? It's because it makes him look bigger. Taking up more space projects more power. It turns out alpha humans do the same thing. They sit on the one chair, they put their arm on the second, and put their feet on the desk. Since you probably won't have three chairs around you all the time, here's something else you can try. Adapt a pose of an army general. Try it right now. Chin up and back straight. Do you feel more confident? It's been scientifically proven that when you adopt these poses, you actually look and feel more confident, thus projecting power. Also, when you gain confidence, you automatically readjust your body pose yet again, which creates a cycle where you gain even more confidence and even more power. All you have to do is get the cycle going. Warmed is simply put how much does someone give the impression that they like us. We perceive warmth through voice tone and through body language, mostly our eyes. You cannot fake warmth because it's so closely tied to your body language and you can't control all your body language consciously. For example, were you aware of your eyelids flattering in front of your eyes right now? How about the weight of your tongue in your mouth? What about the position of your feet? Have you forgotten your eyelids again? It's impossible to micromanage your body language and sooner or later you will slip. So the trick to warmth is to get your internal state right and body language will follow. How do you think the actors do it? 
they get so into character that they believe they are the character, so they don't have to micromanage. Here's how you can use this information to your advantage. This technique is called rewriting reality. Let's say you're driving to the most important meeting in your life, you're in a good mood and you're well prepared for the meeting. Suddenly a reckless driver cuts you off and nearly crashes into you. You hit the brakes and stop in your tracks, probably angry and in a bad mood right before the meeting. You know you must get into your charismatic state, but you only got a few minutes. What if through pure coincidence you were to learn that that idiotic reckless driver was actually a mother whose baby was choking in the back seat and she was just trying to save the baby's life? Would that immediately lift your anger? In most cases in life, you will never find out if it was a reckless driver or a distressed mother. So you're better off choosing whichever reality puts you in the most useful mental state. Hopefully you got a better idea on how to achieve charisma now. But not all charisma is the same. Olivia actually narrows it down to four charisma styles you can achieve depending on which of the three components is the strongest. They are focus charisma, visionary charisma, kindness charisma and authority charisma. Focus charisma is achieved primarily through presence and good listening and makes people feel heard, understood and respected. Visionary charisma requires bold vision that is delivered with complete conviction. It inspires people to believe and want to be a part of this vision. Kindness charisma primarily involves warmth and acceptance and creates emotional connection. Authority charisma is achieved through the projection of power and status and leads people to listen and obey. You can alternate among different charisma styles or even blend them together. To decide which charisma style to use, consider your personality, your goals and the specific situation at hand. I hope you learned something new today. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And as always, don't forget to be better than yesterday.